Welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm Kathleen Walter. We're joined by former House Majority Leader Dick Armey, one of the architects of the Republican Revolution and the Contract with America. Mr. Armey is also chairman of the conservative nonprofit organization Freedom Works, which was founded during the Reagan presidency in 1984. His organization was the national sponsor of the March on Washington back in September, including the Tea Party Express Tour. Welcome back to Newsmax TV, Leader Armey. Well, thank you for having me back. Right now, many folks are watching closely and with great concern the situation in the Gulf. What is your response to President Obama's Oval Office address? And are you sensing any sense of urgency at all from this president? Well, actually, I'm not. I think the thing that I've probably been most distressed of is uh, the uh, apparently he didn't even consider waiving the Jones Act. And we don't know what resources might have been brought into that Gulf immediately upon uh, our recognition of the spill. I've heard as much as 17 nations that were prepared to send men, equipment, technology, uh, and sort of gang up on the spill as they often do across the globe with these multinational uh, cooperations. It's a little shocking to me that a president that has such a multinational orientation as this president didn't immediately see the benefits of waiving the Jones Act and allowing all these resources to come in. So in light of his, uh, his uh, failure to do that and to welcome those resources, I found myself left a little cold by what uh, he presented as his resolve and commitment last night. I just found it to be somewhat hollow. I have a hollow ring to it. Leader, the spill hasn't even been capped yet, and the president is now using this disaster to push energy legislation. He called for Senate action on the energy bill. Is the administration's handling of this a backdoor way of imposing the very unpopular cap and trade? Well, this again is another illustration, probably the most current, certainly won't be the last illustration of Army's axiom that every politician uses every crisis as a new biggest reason why he has to do what he's been wanting to do anyway. Right. And the fact of the matter is cap and trade is bad legislation, it's bad for the economy, it's unnecessary and probably not beneficial for the environment or the atmosphere, uh, and uh, it would just simply be an ideological, uh, what should I say, bow to the environmentalist extremist and cost jobs in America. What we need to do in this case is stay focused on the crisis at hand. Leader, does his response suggest any deficiencies in his administration? Well, you know, many of us have had some concerns in, about just the question of competency. If, in fact, I was in the White House and somebody said we had a grievous bill in the Gulf of Mexico, the first, absolute first thing I would say is, the, we've got to waive the Jones Act to bring the resources in here. If I didn't think of it on my own immediately, I certainly would have recognized it when somebody said, we've got nations that have offered us resources and we can't invite them in. My question would have been why? So I, I do think with respect to the White House, with respect to the Senate leadership today and the House Senate uh, leadership today, there are real competency, competency issues. Now here where a great many of our associates in the uh, grassroots movement for small government, the Tea Party movement, we've said first we have a group of people that are ideologically out of step with America and secondly they're incompetent. When you're incompetent at doing the wrong thing it can work towards real mischief it seems to me. The government released new figures showing that far more oil is flowing than believed. 2.5 million gallons of oil a day, a 50% increase from the last estimate. President Obama promises 90% of it will be cleaned up this summer. Can we trust the Obama administration in providing an accurate picture of damage and in cleanup? I think the one thing that we have to concern ourselves with, given the way this administration has responded to this catastrophe as it's developed, is can you trust them at all to even know what they're doing? Uh, we can't even get a measure of what is the damage that's coming out, the amount of oil coming out. I think the president was given a political speech last night. He basically turned to political advisors and he said, what can I say to the American people and make them feel good about me again? And he said that irrespective of the question, do we have any objective basis by which we can predict with any high degree of probability that I can actually meet this promise if I make it? 
I don't think he said there's an old country western song that says, I don't care what's right or wrong, I don't try to understand, let the devil take tomorrow, but because tonight I need a friend, help me make it through the night. I think he thought that speech gets him through the night and then he'll deal with whether or not he can actually deliver on this commitment of 90% uh, sometime in the future. And I'll guarantee you this, if the president doesn't make good on this commitment, he will find somebody else whose fault it will be. Democrats are always accusing Republicans of being in bed with big oil, yet very little is made of the fact that President Obama was the single largest recipient of BP campaign contributions. Do you find that ironic? Well, I find it predictable and ironic. I've been saying for years that liberals always accuse conservatives of what they themselves are doing. And uh, when you come to, one of the great myths in American politics is that the Republican Party is the party of big business and that's absolutely wrong. Big business has been in bed with liberal Democrats trying to buy favors, get favors, which they've gotten from Democrats. What are your thoughts on recent primary elections? You've been a big promoter of the Tea Party. Are you happy to see its influence? And do you expect it'll be as big of a force in the elections come this fall? I, uh, the, the, the Tea Party movement, this big grassroots movement, represents a real cultural change in America. We are rediscovering our, our small government constitutional limitations on government uh, roots as a nation, and we're rediscovering it at an enormously rapid rate, and we're taking the message to the Republicans, we want you to act like us. We got a promise 230 years ago, the, the blessings of posterity for ourselves and our, our blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity. We want you to make good on that promise. And they're making a big impact. And right now, this week, we are wrapping up the whole process in Utah where Mike Lee is very likely to come out as the not Republican nominee uh, for the Senate. That's a big change from Bennett who voted uh, Senator Bennett, who voted for TARP and many other big government programs, was the first to endorse a first Republican to endorse a a, a, a government mandate on health care, and so we saw a big change in. Uh, Florida, where the culture of service to America through public office uh, that Rubio embraces is such a marked contrast to what you saw with Chris. We're seeing it in South Carolina with this marvelous opportunity we have here with Nikki Haley. Now, a couple Senate candidates won nominations by campaigning against the GOP establishment, Rand Paul of Kentucky and Sharon Angle of Nevada. What do these candidates have to do to win their respective Senate races? I think they need to stay true to the big vision dream of America. What, what, what's winning in America today, especially in sharp contrast to the current administration in, the, in Congress as well as the White House, is a respect, even a, a, an awesome respect for America. We are the greatest blessing to the world in the history of the world. It comes from the genius of our Constitution. It comes from the practical awareness of the limits of big government and the wonderful accomplishments of the private sector economic activity where people take their chances, make their decisions, live with their consequences, prosper or die, depending on whether it's full or no bailouts. And so we have any number of opportunities now for people in office to act out in their service to the country in office a chance for America to be the greatness that America is. And that comes with, starts with respecting this great country. The Tea Party activists, the grassroots activists across the country just simply say it again, oh, we want us for you to love America and our American heritage as we love it. Do that and we'll vote for you. Leader, your organization FreedomWorks endorsed a number of candidates in the primaries who went on to be very, very successful and win their respective elections. Are there any additional candidates you'd like to announce today that you're endorsing? We've got a whole group of House candidates we're examining. And if, if your listeners or want to go on uh, FreedomWorks website, take a look at uh, our, our section on taking America back, begin to examine on our website, I think you'll see the revelations of new candidates, particularly for House seats that are showing up. We're, we're discovering true believing patriots that understand the greatness of America. And as we discover them, we're getting behind their races and we will re re reveal that 
generically across the country on our website. Okay. How confident are you Republicans will indeed win the House this fall? I think the Republicans are beginning to get it. They're beginning to understand again, hey, when we were the party of Goldwater, when we were the party of Reagan, when we were the party of constitutional limitations on government and responsible restraint of big government in office, we were prospered and attractive to the American people and we did real service in the lives of the American people. I think the Republicans are starting to get that back. If they can get on that ground and they can stand there and they can convince the nation that they really are the real McCoy, as it were, ready to do a service to this country, they can win the majority in the House for certain and very possibly could win it in the Senate as well. All right, leader, last question real quickly. Freedom Works is such a great organization. How do people find out more about it and how do they become more involved? Can we get your website one last time? Yeah, it, it, we're not that hard to find. Just Google up Freedom Works and it'll take us, take you to us. Uh, we, we feel like uh, we've got a real commitment here. We just love this country so much and so adore our Constitution and feel so blessed to get to live with a genius. Can you imagine 58 people gathering at one time 230 years ago? You couldn't find 58 people in America today with the genius and the courage of those 58. Go take a look at them and I hope you can see them as you pass through our website and I hope we do a service to the country that honors their great courage and genius. All right, Leader Army, thank you so much. It is always great to see you here on Newsmax TV. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.